we're talking about the, the cones, and remember that there's a there's an S cone here, and then there's an M and an L. And it there are a lot more of these. These are about 90% of all the photoreceptors, and this is a very small proportion of all the cones are the S. This is not, it's not 30, 30, 30 at all. So these are a small proportion. So if you want to figure out how much light is there in the scene, what's the luminance of the scene, what do you want to know? You want to know how much energy is, is in this realm. And so we have a, a, a a channel that we think of as a luminance channel, which is the sum of the M plus L, uh, M plus L cone responses. We also have uh, two other uh, channels in the retina, and these are channels that are going to enable us to both see form but also see color, and so. Um, one of the, the channels is what's the, what's the relative activity here in the short wavelength versus all this longer wavelength? And so we have S minus M plus L. And what that tells us is how much, how much short le wavelength is there? Is there a lot? Well, if there's a lot, then then cortex is probably going to end up seeing some version of blue or violet. If there's not much, then they're not going to see blue or violet. And there's a, fi a, a final one, which is true in us primates, where the L cone, the gene that produces the L cone, has been duplicated to make the M cone. And that is M versus L. And M versus L. Uh, you can think of this as M divided by L or, or M minus, which, whichever this is. It doesn't matter. It's, it's M versus L. So M versus L is going to tell you, uh, basically is going to tell you under normal circumstances whether that apple is ready to eat or not. Okay. So let's look at that uh, um, here. Here are the, the a, a schema um, of what the these different channels responses would be to this picture. It's a very stylized picture. Here we have red, blue, and green. And, uh, and apologies to those of you um, in the audience, roughly 5% um, of the men who uh, are colorblind. So um, the luminance of this is simply the amount of information that we're getting, and, and that's somewhat, it's less, you're getting less from the blue just because there are fewer cones, uh, fewer S cones, um, and, and so on. So this is what it looks like. And so there's a little information here um, that could tell, help you tell uh, red from green, but not a ton. Here is the S minus L plus M channel. This is the channel that's going to enable you to detect blue uh, things. And, and here's, um, it's, it's responding most to this blue circle. And here's the L versus M. And in the L versus M, it's responding in this version, um, the, the, the stylized cell is responding to red and it's not responding to green, it's not responding to blue either. There is a flip version of this where the cell would respond to green um, but not to red or blue. All right, so these are all, these opponencies are, there are half the cells are one way and half the cells are the other way. So this is, this is typically talked about as red-green opponency, this is talked about blue-yellow opponency, and this is black-white opponency. Now, <clears throat> let's remember how, how we got here. We're, we're ignoring the rods for the moment, but the L cone got duplicated. And it, as it turns out, the L cone is on the X chromosome. It got duplicated. It's right next door. It shares about 98% homology between the, the, uh, the sequence of the L cone and the M cone. And because they have such uh, high uh, sequence uh, uh, similarity, there is a lot of homologous recombination between uh, M and L cone uh, uh, transcription. As a result, 
What you see is, uh, is that um, sometimes this M cone will be shifted over towards the L cone. It'll have a, a big stretch of amino acids that actually come from the L cone. And sometimes the L cone will be shifted over towards the M cone. What are going to be the, uh, what are going to be the uh, um, consequences of that? Well, whether you lose one of these cones or whether it shifts over, the consequence will be that you will no longer see <clears throat> the difference between, uh, you will no longer perceive the difference between red and green the way that others do. So I can tell the difference between red and green, but if I only had one of these cones, I would not be able to. And if one of these cones were so shifted so that it was even more similar, then it's really, it's not providing me with enough distinguishing information to tell red from green. And so there are four different types of color blindness uh, that are common, that are all X-linked, so all much more common in men than in women. Um, the L cone was the first gene, so it's the pro, and M is the dute, it's the second one. Um, if you lose it, you have a protanopia, and if you lose the M cone, you have a deuteranopia. But if you simply shift the L cone over towards the M cone, you have a protanomaly, and if you shift the M cone towards the L cone, you have a deuteranomaly. This deuteranomaly is the one that is very common. This is the one that it, uh, affects about 5% of the male population. I should note that the loss of the S cone, the S cone is coded for by a gene on an, on an autosome, autosomal chromosome, not an, um, a sex-linked chromosome, and so uh, it's not X-linked, and it's also pretty, it's very rare. All right, so what's the, what is the op upshot of having such of any one of these versions of colorblindness, so-called colorblindness? It's not that you can't see color, it's just that you cannot see this one distinction or you see that distinction much, uh, much less well, so um, much, much more poorly. Um, so you, you're not seeing the difference between red and green. So for example, if you're driving at night and there are no positional cues as to whether the red or the green uh, light is, is illuminated, the red is on top, I don't know, which one's on top? I don't even know, because I can see them. I think the red's on top. Um, but uh, if I didn't have those positional cues and I couldn't see the difference between red and green, which is the, diff the situation for a colorblind person driving at night, then I got no clue whether I should go or, or, or slow down. Um, obviously, there are other cues that can help a person in that situation, uh, but, but it's, it's not that colorblindness is without its, uh, its tribulations. Okay, so recently, um, a company called Enchroma put out a series, a, a, a type of sunglasses that enables people to see the difference between um, red and green. And, and let me just show you what their, uh, their tactic is. Their tactic is that they, they took a notch of, uh, they filtered out a notch of wavelengths, this notch that's in this gray zone. So now, the, the so consider a person that, that has an anomaly, not, an, not a loss of the MRL cone, but an MRL cone that has moved towards the other one. So with this notch, what, you're, you're, you're losing this stuff. You're losing this stuff that, that is too close to, to, to count and you're exemplifying this stuff. So this stuff is exciting. Wavelengths out here are gonna excite the L cone way, way more than the M cone. And wavelengths down here are gonna excite the M cone way more than the L cone. And so you have artificially separated the reds from the greens. Um, and you note that I said that they are sunglasses. Well, yeah, they're sunglasses. And why do I say that? Because look at the wavelengths that have been taken out. This is a big chunk of the luminance. And so without that luminance, 
everything's going to there's not going to be a lot of luminance. It's going to be a dark picture. It's going to be a relatively dark picture. So these are not useful for uh, indoor lighting or, or mesopic or, or even low photopic uh, lighting. These are good for, for bright, bright, uh, sunny days. But it does enable a person to get a different cue from their L and their M cones. Okay, so we're going to now take a brief foray into the visual functions that are not perceptual.